I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. What the f I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Ford Mustang Mach E first edition without launch control. It's pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Model Three performance fast, but it's really good horsepower and torque. Three hundred and forty six horsepower, four hundred and twenty eight pound feet of torque from two motors and an eighty eight kilowatt hour battery. Okay, we're rolling. We're rolling. Hit me with it. No lag. It's a, it's a good amount of just push you back in your seat. Feeling unbridled. If you guys don't understand that reference, uh, here's the clip. Feeling unbridled, yeah. So Yuri, we've already reviewed the Mach-E, so why are we reviewing it again? Okay, that was an early production one and it's super glitched out on us. The traction control couldn't turn off and we couldn't have the propulsion sound. That propulsion sound. Yeah, and it sounds kind of all right. It gives it like a little bit of a muscly tone, so it's actually cool to hear it while driving. Yeah, it's like a deeper kind of almost Mustang-ish growl, yeah, and then it kind of tapers off near the top. It's less TIE Fighter and more trying to be a real car, but this actually feels pretty normal car-ish. Yeah, this feels great. And we actually didn't send the first one through Cliche Corner, so we are actually going to assess the handling a lot in this one. Send it! Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit of oversteer from this all-wheel drive, all drive model. <laughs> yes, we can. We definitely can uh this handles really well for the size and shape of this thing because it's quite a large car yeah it's pretty fun yeah this is actually a lot more fun than i thought it'd be that send through cliche corner was with traction off and in unbridled yeah so i've actually found the best way to get the most fun out of this car and by fun i mean slidiness so what you have to do is crank the wheel at the same time that you floor it because there's no lag since it's an electric car it sends all the power to the back and then it gets the back end out like instantly for a second. But it's like, it's such a lame back out compared to just like a rear wheel drive manual car. Because well, so the like, traction's off, but the yeah. stability's still on. I even, but even with traction on, it's still like, it does it a little bit. But actual handling wise, the steering feels like fantastic. And the, like the, the, the steering wheel as well and everything feels really, really good. Yeah, and the car is really well balanced. Like it doesn't understeer. It actually feels like it's fun to drive. This, this is fun to drive. And it's not too fast for Cliche Corner like a Taycan Turbo S would be. Yeah. This is like the right amount to enjoy Cliche Corner and not just be fully on the brakes every time you just fly right in. Right, like you're not gonna be overwhelmed by this car. Like anyone can get into this car, hop in and still have a, like some fun. Yeah, and it definitely doesn't feel suv -y. Yeah, exactly. So yes, it's big. Yes, it's pretty heavy, but it kind of hides its weight well by being fun to drive. So they did a really good job of like the power delivery, the handling and everything like that. Like I, I really like driving this car. Yeah, if only they let us take it to Cliche Corner like a year ago, we'd be way more stoked because like everything really shines here. Yeah, so let, let me see if I can get that little uh, oversteer hack to work here. So I'm just going to stab and go. Yep, Yeah. <laughs> like every time, it's, okay. it's really good. There you go, all wheel drive Mach-E owners. Yes, stab and go, just be careful. Stab and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the thing we didn't really talk about in the last Mach-E video was charging because we only had it for a couple hours. Jacob went above and beyond to find out everything about charging and what are your findings? Yeah, so I put on my investigative journalism hat and I decided to visit several different stations to see how the stations were because we've driven a lot of electric cars, some of them being Teslas, and from what we found, the Tesla stations always work. And, and, the there's non, a, and there's a ton of them. Yes, and the non-Tesla stations are all scattered everywhere. They're all totally different. Sometimes one of them's broken. So most, just, of the, most of the time, they're faulty. I wanted to see what would happen this time. So I'm going to go to four different ones, and here's some of my experience doing that. So I'm going through the process of setting up my Ford Pass, and uh, I uploaded a nice photo of myself. I also named this car the No Pipes. Okay, so I found a non-fast charger you have to pay for at a mall. Okay, so when you use the built-in navigation, it's actually pretty cool. It tells you exactly where to turn on your main display, and it also tells you your current battery level or how many kilometers you have, and how many kilometers to the charging station. Leave the road to the right. Arriving at the destination on the right. Uh, I don't see the charging station. That wasn't very clear at all but here I am. This looks like it's free. So, let's see if this works. Let's see if we can see our charging rate. 
If I open the door with this weird handle, uh, if I turn on the car, I probably shouldn't while it's charging. Driver door, yes, I'll close that. Oh, charging. Uh, okay, 8.30 p.m. It's currently 10.23 a.m. Well, it works, so that's good. I'm gonna go to the next place now. Okay, so I got this open. Yes, it says horsepower in case you didn't see. That's pretty cool. So let's see what the thing is here. And, oh, this thing is heavy to do with one hand. Okay. Oh, payment declined. The vehicle is no longer communicating with the charger. Okay, now I have to unplug this. Unplug. Unplugged. Let's start this over. All I'm doing is following the instructions. Tap process. Oh, authorized. Okay, this time it worked. Aha! Yes! That is going to be my price. Why isn't it telling me how long it's going to take this time? Now it won't let me. Oh, there we Okay, finally. Okay, now we're talking 80% at 1059 and it is 1032. Okay, that's pretty damn good. And I'm not making this video to knock electric cars because I actually like electric cars, but it's the charging infrastructure that still sucks if you don't have a Tesla. So while this is pretty good, there's only four of these things here and they're fast chargers and then there's a bunch of slow chargers, but they don't always work. Okay, here's all the details from the charging session. Cost me just under five bucks and I got nine kilowatt hours. Okay, so this is a charge point charger. I need that one, not that one or that one because that's where I parked before and that's not a fast charger. So I need to go to this one. So connect plug to car. It's really hard to do one-handed. There we go. Start. Well, that was nice. So 80%, 11.41, and it is 10.58. Okay, so that seems to be slower than the other charger. So that means I can only conclude that this must not be a 150 kilowatt charger. This must be a fast charger that's slower. So maybe... 100 kilowatt or something because it doesn't say on this station. I'm gonna check. It just says it's fast, but it doesn't say how fast. Yeah, so it doesn't tell me exactly how fast it's charging. Going to Petro Canada now. This is very easy to find. It's in the corner. Ironically, leave the road to the left. The arriving at the destination gas station got the EV charging right, which is pretty funny. Let's uh, plug her in. Uh oh. Uh. Uh, that's not gonna reach. Okay, so I've now reversed. I'm as close as I can get. There's a bollard here. Just gonna make my life difficult, but this is how close I have to get to get that there. So, I gotta very carefully open this. Uh, uh, God, doing this with one hand. No, I gotta, okay, I'm gonna have to put the phone down. Twist it. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. What a pain. Okay, 33 cents a minute. Oh, it's sounding loud. Oh, here we go. Okay, so 42. Let's see how fast this can get. So it claims up to 200. Oh, it's, it's picking up. This is good. We get underneath the charging cable. Open this door carefully. Careful. Oh, I touched it. Sorry, Ford. Oh, okay. So 80%, 1137. And it's 1118. And that's the thing with all these charging stations is each one is different. So I pulled up forwards because assuming from the last three stations I was at, but then I wouldn't fit forward. So I reversed, but I barely fit reversed because the way that the cable's done here. So it's just, it's weird at every single station. Whereas with Tesla, you back in every single time. It's the same every single time you plug in and you're done. Also, that's a very loud sounding V8. I really like it. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. It's so all of my menus seem to have busted. So if I do this, everything's just going on top of each other. And this is while I'm charging. Like, all right. Still haven't found a way to actually see how fast it's charging. Uh, there's no rate or anything like that. So, and I'm trying to look at this to tell me that I'm going 83 kilowatts. Oh, let me just see if I can, there we go. And now it's telling me 100% to 143. So I am going to continue charging at that same rate. It's 1143. So I would actually have to take <laughs> two hours charging at that same rate 
because the charger slowed down. And that's the whole problem with getting charged by the minute for electric cars. It charged by the kilowatt or kilowatt hour, whatever it is, like, ugh. And a trip isn't complete without visiting a Fox body. Oh yeah, Mustang, Mustang. Ooh, look at all those parts that are gonna go on the Mustang. Yeah, Summit. Ooh, it's gonna get fast. Wonder if I can put some of those parts on the Mach-E. Probably not, no. And I posted all this experience on Instagram and I actually had a lot of constructive criticism for Ford and Ford actually reached back out before filming this video and addressed a lot of my concerns, which is fantastic. So great job, Ford. They are doing a lot of beta software updates because I kind of feel like this is almost like a beta version of a car. So there's gonna be a lot of over the air updates. Number one, they said you will be able to, in the future, see the charging rate, whether it's through the app or potentially through the car. And Tesla also shows you that on yeah. the screen. So for everyone who thinks, oh, Tesla's just giving you beta products, oh, these guys are doing it too. Every car company that's doing electric cars is doing that. It's not just Ford. Yeah. So overall, my biggest criticism wasn't necessarily with the car, it's actually the infrastructure, specifically in Ontario, which seems to have not improved that much over the last few years. So here's the thing, and it's the biggest scam in the electric car charging industry that they've pulled and everyone's just said okay because that's how it started. They charge you by the minute, not by the kilowatt hour. So to compare that to fuel, they're charging you for how long it takes you to fill up your car rather than how much fuel you're getting. But then there's also like a level two will cost less per minute than a level three. But like lithium battery technology is that you can't fast charge past 80%, like that's just science. Right, but you should still be getting charged for the amount of kilowatt hours that you're getting, not the time that it takes. Kind of, yes, no, because it's like, why does the charger have to like suffer with the manufacturer not making their stuff faster or like, you know, it goes back and forth and then some people may like just hold that charge for a long time and they're taking up a charger where if it was actually costing them a good amount of money, they would get out of there so the next person can go. And like Tesla, they do a thing where if you leave your car charged too long, you get charged for taking up a spot. But these stations are also doing that, so that's not part of the problem. But the biggest problem is there could be a car next to you that's charging and it will slow down your rate so you're getting charged for more time than the guy next to you in the same car. That yeah. is a friggin' scam. All this stuff kind of sucks. You're like, why wouldn't I just get a Tesla for the infrastructure? Like, okay, so the guy who runs the company is kind of wild and he's sending stuff to space and then there's a lot of people complaining about stuff and there's a lot of weird updates and everyone's mad about self-driving, but like, they got the infrastructure right, so like, well, that's the whole thing. That's, that's kind of The better. infrastructure is the problem. Could, I could deal with everything else as long as the infrastructure is good. But okay, what if I wanted to charge at home? Well, no, I'm not done yet because I just really want to call out all these stupid electric companies that are scamming consumers like nonstop with this minute charging rate instead of kilowatt hour because I hate you all for doing that because you're going to get away with it because no one's calling you out for it. Fuck. Okay, calm down there, past Jacob. Future Jacob here sitting in one of three Ford vehicles that I own. Just gonna take off these unbiased sunglasses. This one happens to be a Fox Body Mustang. Anyways, it's been a couple weeks since that video was filmed. Several different things have happened. Number one, the Canadian government has announced a $56 million plan to change the way that electric cars are being billed. So it's actually going to switch from by the minute to by the kilowatt hour, which is exactly what I was ranting about. So shout out Canadian government for doing that. And it turns out I was right in my rant. I don't know why it costs $56 million to do that, but the government is the government. Number two, I actually watched a video by Out of Spec Motoring. Highly recommend watching this video. He went on a long road trip in the Mustang Mach-E. He mostly went to Electrify America stations and he had a lot of problems charging. But in that video, that's where I discovered that Electrify America, depending on the state, charges by the kilowatt hour, which is the way it should be. So Electrify Canada is the Electrify America counterpart where it bills by the minute. So I reached out to both companies, Electrify America and Electrify Canada, to see why there was such a discrepancy and nobody got back to me. So I tried my investigative journalism again and it failed apparently. So I tried to get you guys an answer, couldn't get one, but at least the Canadian government is doing something about it. So that's about it for my rant, sitting here in my Fox body, which clearly needs a new headliner. Uh, back to the video. Thanks for joining me on this rant. And just like when Jacob called BMW out for charging Android Auto, he's going to make his point proven and we're going to change the world. There we go. And okay. Then, and then also BMW stopped charging extra features, for, like charging extra subscriptions for headlights that avoid like blinding the other person and stuff. Yes. Okay. So you asked about home charging. I also had a problem with my home charger. Well, which is the one supplied by Ford. So it's a regular 120 volt charger. It's not going to charge very fast. That's fine. 
but I couldn't actually charge it. So it said charging was paused. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Luckily, Ford called me and Because explained. you posted to the Instagram. Yes, so thank you Ford again for reaching out. So the problem was that the plug wasn't fully seated in the charger itself because there's a little portion of the plug that actually disconnects from the charger. Yeah, I bet you if they made that part red, people would know to push that in more. And that's what people on Instagram said. So shout out you all for actually having the answer to that. So here's the thing, it looks like it's plugged in and it's it's so in there that you can tug on it and it'll still stay in there. So it'll, it'll never drop itself out. You just have to push even more? Like way more, you but have to give like it a lights, lot of force. Lights were like turning on and stuff. It's like, why but it was lights... orange, so I was like, okay, something's up. Why are lights turning on if it's not fully plugged in? Well, yeah, and people were like telling me, oh, check your breakers. Guys, this isn't the first electric car I've charged. Like we've driven many of these, I've charged them all, no issues. It's a plug design issue for their charger. Yeah. So anyways, I solved that by shoving it in more and it worked flawlessly, so there you go. Okay, so remember a couple years ago, like four years ago, we did the challenge where we drove the Ionic from Toronto to Ottawa and back in one day. Yes. Okay, so you used the onboard navigation to see how long it would take to get there and back on this and how long did it say it would take? So I actually used the Ford Pass app because you can do it on your app, which is pretty cool. It said it would take about seven hours, I believe, but I wasn't at a full charge and it accounts for the charging that you'd have to do on the way, which wasn't a 150 kilowatt charger because it was something 50 or 100 because our infrastructure sucks so bad. So the infrastructure from here to Ottawa and back is still pretty much just as crappy as it was the time we went four years ago. Pretty much, but this car has more range, but the charging times yeah. hasn't improved because yes, it's level three. Level three is considered 50 kilowatts and up, but 150 is still way faster than 50, but they're both level threes. That's the kind of stuff it really grinds my gears. All right, I'm tired. Yuri, drive. <laughs> Jacob and I are guessing if we can neutral drop this. So I'm going to put it in neutral, put my foot all the way down on the accelerator, and then flip it to drive. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to... Ah. Ah, that's the lamest <laughs> neutral drop of all time. It's good that they accounted for stupidity, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's not stupid? The box test. Box test. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. So we couldn't fit these boxes in here today, but eight, nine, and our new box system member flat out seven, seven, two, ten. Worse than a Honda Civic. 38% battery left, launch. It's like not too crazy electric power, but still good electric power. Yeah, and just for reference, we started the day with around 70% battery. And then through the little S's before Cliche Corner, it just feels really planted. Like all the good things about an electric car are in this. Yes, except the bounciness of the suspension. Yeah, it is a little like reboundy after. Yeah, so I found it worse like on highway going like kind of over undulations and stuff. Like I almost felt like I got bounced out of the seat here and there. And the suspension is comfy, it's just a little bouncy. Okay, I like being able to pull through the corners right at the end with that electric torque. Yeah, and it rips, man. And the stab and turn. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, overall this is a lot of fun, but I would still like way rather just have a rear wheel drive manual car. Of course. If I wanted to have fun fun. Yes. But it's cool that they add a little bit of fun. Yes, exactly. Like I feel like I wouldn't necessarily take this out to go for a drive even though we're doing that right now, but I would rather just drive like a regular Mustang instead, obviously. Okay, quickly, looks wise, this one's in red. Yes, it is, looks pretty good. This red color is so much better than that white and like everything pops more, all the lines, everything. Like we could see like, it looks a lot more muscly in red than it did in white. And then everything else looks wise and all other concerns are addressed in that previous video. So just watch that. Yeah, and we generally really like how this looks and they definitely pulled a sneak on everybody by making a lot of body panels black. So then if I wanted to change my drive modes, I can do that through the infotainment, which again, isn't as intuitive as like a Model 3 would be, but like it takes some time to get used to. Like even finding traction control, there's two different places to find it. It took me a long time each time to find it. Yeah, and I've been living with this for essentially a week and it still feels like everything's kind of buried in different menus. Like I never remember which menu something was in. So I actually used the Ford Pass app to actually customize this whole car. So I set my profile, changed my picture, called this car the No Pipes. And I actually had a pretty good time using the actual app, even though the app doesn't actually show you that many things. Okay, and follow other journalists review in Canada, see if anyone else figures out how to change this after the day that we have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
everyone's reviews is gonna have a picture of Jacob. Ex- it. Exactly. It's by the way, it's me and my Fox body. So just so you guys know. And then we also have the option for one pedal driving. So I'm gonna switch to that for the rest of the review. It is a little weird to get used to, but oh, it's, it's gonna hurt cool. my neck. <laughs> That's no, actually not bad. No, no, it's not bad. Okay, we got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto on here, and it is like the weird tall screen, which I really don't like. I don't like the F-150 screen as much either because you have to look down. I kind of just like the BMW Miata style screens. But it is nice that you can enable or disable wireless or wired CarPlay, which thank you. Yeah, and then you have it so that with your Ford Pass app, you can put your phone on the wireless charger and that'll turn on the car for you. Yeah, so I've been using phone as key, which I mean, for me, it's actually been working out pretty well. So I never have to have a key. I just have my phone in my pocket. And then I do have to put my phone in the wireless charger to actually start the car. Okay, and in this car, we also have uh, Radar Cruise Lane Keep pretty good but it's like not my favorite i think it does ask you to put your hands on the wheel even when you have your hands on the wheel a lot uh, it depends if the road is straight for a long time and how much pressure you have so yeah, yeah i think it's a very very good system but then the thing is like with a, a maserati it just detects that your hand is touching two points and it, right. it knows your hand is there even if you're not putting pressure on it but a maserati won't be able to drive completely hands-free down the road which is what that little extra thing is in front of the gauge cluster yeah but yeah, well, I guess this is a beta car just like Tesla's, so. Exactly, over the year updates, that's, that's <laughs> life now. And just like the other one, we still have 360 camera and like a reverse camera, whatever, but the 360 camera is small at the top. It's kind of weird, but it's like still kind of okay. Yeah, and since we're talking about this screen, uh, my knee does still hit it, but I've found a much more comfortable driving position without my knee hitting it. So you, you do have to adjust, but you can, and it's still very close to your knees though. Hey, fit some cups just fine, and let's do some visor tests. Ooh, Three, job, two, Ford. one. It's got the sliding visor logo. Yes, it does. Okay, back seat room. Back seat room is fantastic at six foot one and a half. What do you think of this moonroof? I like it a lot. It looks cool. These seats up here, very, very, very comfortable. Very I would say comfortable. as comfortable as Nissan Space seats. Yeah, and then we also have our uh, Ford GT shifter. Because Ford GT race car. Yes, and Shelby GT 500. And back to super electricity stuff, AKA just launching this thing all the time. Zero to 60, I got with the Draggy app. I did about 5.5 seconds and 5.2 with a one foot rollout, which this is rated for, I believe, about 4.8 seconds so I couldn't get that time but it's still pretty quick off the line okay and then right now at 35% I have a hundred eleven kilometers left what is the full range of this bad boy 435 kilometers which is actually pretty good and that's 270 miles and this is the extended range so then do we now know what that badge on the bottom stands for the four and the X yes so the four is all-wheel drive and the X is extended range ah, yeah, yeah. yeah here we go okay yeah. And speaking of badges, we should probably explain what the first edition is. It's the launch edition, isn't it? Yeah, sort of. Um, it's basically just like an exterior package kind of thing. So you get like your mirror caps in the same color. You get first edition door sill plates. And that's kind of really it. You get red calipers. And the wheels do look pretty nice on this Mach-E. What would be the Continental recommended tire? The Cross Contact LX25. And these aren't for sale anymore. They're all spoken for. Yes, but this is basically just like a premium edition. But it's cool that like we have this one because like we're not only like a car review thing for people to buy. We're kind of also just like an inventory, a library of cool cars, like when they were made and when they were filmed. Right? Yeah. So you just have to mostly think of this as a first edition, but you can also think of this as a premium edition and some actual charging stuff. I know I went off on this earlier, but the actual charge times, it takes about 10 to 14 hours on a level two and then about 45 minutes on a level three up to 80%. And that up to 80% is very critical because I don't have the time to charge this to 100%. It actually takes so much longer once you get to 80%. You're, you're really not supposed to charge lithium batteries all the way to the end anyway. Right, which is an, my next rant. Are you ready for this? Bro, it's, it's No, it's no, science. you ready? Okay, go for it. Every manufacturer should be giving distances from 80%, not 100. No, no, that is, that is, yeah, that is very accurate. Because they give the charging times to 80%. They give the charging everything to 80%. Why don't they give the distance from 80%? Yeah, so I think we've covered a lot of random electric car rants that uh, we've been holding back for a while. Yeah, uh, sorry guys. But overall, Mach-E is pretty sick. It's a lot of fun to drive through Cliche Corner. More fun than I would expect. It looks really awesome and it's got a lot of room. So I would give this car a very high mark, but we should probably get to the price. Before we get to the price, I actually think that this is the most fun to drive outside of a Porsche Taycan. For electric cars? Yeah. Okay, we haven't driven a Model Y or Model 3 with the Performance Pack V2. Right, because we don't know how that's going to handle, but handling-wise, I don't think a Model 3 was very good. Straight line-wise, performance was very good. Yeah, but I think with like the, the Track V2, it can kind of do crazy stuff. And then like you see the Mountain Pass performance stuff, like obviously they're modified, cars, yeah. but like that has more potential, I think. I don't know. Everything's just like front-wheel drive appliances. Like this is like the most fun outside of a Taycan. Man, I, I, I guess it's kind of right. I did really like the... Um, 
the smart for two cabriolet, but that was more like a, a cute little fun thing, like zipping through traffic kind of stuff. Exactly. Not, not cliche corner fun. Right. Okay, so now price. Now let's get to the price. This one is $72,245, which is only about $3,000 more than the premium that we drove. Canadian. So a pretty good price. Yeah. I guess it's a pretty good price, but there's like a lot of stuff that they're still working on and updating. So it's kind of like in the same boat as Tesla's to me and the infrastructure is just not there. So Right. Other than the build quality, which I feel this is much higher than a Tesla, but yeah, like actual like usability wise, other than the infrastructure, it feels pretty similar. Okay. Build quality, but then like that rear shade in the trunk like falls apart all the time and just like flops in the wind. Yeah. It's, but I like, mean, it's, it's not a panel gap and it's not a door that's falling off and you can open all the doors. Yeah. But then the charger is disconnected from the... Which is definitely a design flaw it's the same as the model y to me except i don't think so structure. yeah i don't think so all right let us know what you think of the new mach e and what you think about our electric car rants let us know below if you have an explanation why someone's doing something this way or that way or if you have a solution for everything yeah and watch our uh, tesla and porsche tycon reviews because it was pretty fun to do and our old mach e review with uh, more other stuff that we talked about right here all of those did we even talk about the front no it's got a front